Meet Shane Gillis, the Bud Light King. Uh, yes! <laughs> a skillful impersonator. What a big room this is. I walked in here and I said, wow, what a big room. <laughs> and a world-class, self-deprecating comic. I don't think I've ever made a girl make a sound with my dick. <laughs> Except like when I lay on them at first and they're like... <laughs> Shane Gillis is one of the most authentic comedians in the world today, and he's lived such a unique and inspiring life. He was once a high school prodigy on track to make it to the NFL, but after many life-changing events and great struggles, Shane found himself in front of a mic entertaining the world. So today, we will show you why there will never be another Shane Gillis. Uncovering his football adventures, his unique appeal to fans, and at the end, we will reveal his secret talent. So technically, I'm a Division One football player that is a decorated veteran and was cast on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I didn't do one of those things. Shane Michael Gillis was born and raised in a small working class town in rural Pennsylvania, a place he's actually described as white trash. Like if this was my hometown, someone could just walk in here in full camouflage and sit down and you'd be like, that's a fucking good outfit. I'm from a white trash enough town that this was killing it. Shane grew up with his mom, two older sisters, and a very distinctive father who put him through many abnormal childhood experiences. That's funny, one time my sister, she's here, she lost a game uh, in basketball her senior year, and I was talking shit, I was like, you guys fucking suck. <laughs> At the dinner table, and my dad was like, all right, square up, finish it. <laughs> and he fucking, we cleared out the living room table, and my sister and I boxed. <laughs> One of the guys my dad invited, he's this like old fucking dude. Uh oh. Blacked out at the bar and they had to take him home. Oh, oh god. So they take him home, throw him on the bed in one of the rooms we have, and then they go back to the bar. Then me and my friends are like, let's, let's fuck with this guy a little bit. So we're slapping him, screaming in his face, shit yeah. like that. He's not waking up. <laughs> he's oh, not boy. waking up. Oh, dude, boy. we set an alarm clock next to his head and set it for a minute later and turned the lights off. And everybody hid. It's one of my happiest memories. Despite Shane's bizarre childhood, he also had many positive experiences. I played double A Pennsylvania football. It was small. Were you one of the like locker room favorites? Were you like the vibes guy? I mean, I was the captain, but I was like, let's, let's skip working out today, right, fellas? <laughs> let's go fuck around. Yo, so, you yeah. were a captain? Yeah. That's fucking sick. It's pretty sick. You're right. Shane was the captain during the time Trinity High won the 2002 and 2004 Mid-Penn State Championship. This made him a high school prospect on track to get into a D1 school. Yeah, that was it. And then plus, I just wanted to play D1. I was like set on being able to tell people I played D1. Shane's dream was initially to go to Notre Dame and follow in the footsteps of his grandfather and uncle. But unfortunately, this dream never came true for Shane. And instead, he found himself at West Point, a prestigious military school where his true character was revealed. I quit. Uh, I was at West Point for about three weeks. <laughs> Wait, I'm not being. I'm you not, quit the college too? Oh, I fucking got out. Of <laughs> not just the football. Dude, it was boot camp. So, uh, yeah, I guess it's yeah, military. It was boot yeah. camp. And you're trying to do boot camp with football at the yeah, same and time? Yeah, it was funny because while you're getting recruited, they're like, football, all the football players, we get an escape. We get to leave the military stuff and go play football. And it's like, nice. Turns out, college football sucks. So your parents drop you off at like 5 a.m. And then you march around and all this shit. And then your parents come back at like 5 p.m and there's like a parade of all the new cadets past all the parents. And like while I was walking past my parents, I was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> like, wow. In a march, I was like, I'm gonna quit. After quitting West Point, Shane did not give up entirely. And instead, he chose to try college again. So I'll tell you, after Army, I transferred to Elon and played okay. one season of college football. Okay. So no matter where I went, I was gonna quit. I quit after that full season, uh, cause college football did suck. But uh, yeah, I should've went one double A. I should've went to like Duquesne or the smaller. Shane ultimately concluded college football required more of him than he was willing to give. So like a workout plan just before you even get to fucking workouts. Mm -hmm. And mine just sat in my trunk and gathered dust like fuck no dude. I opened the first page of that and it was like all right for warm-ups run 10 40 yard dashes and I was like nah no. <laughs> <laughs> threw it away. I was like, fuck that. I'm just going to show up and ball out. Dude, show I, showed these guys up, what I showed up in like day one. I was like, woo. Like throwing up and like shit. crying. I, <laughs> dude, I did one squat and cramped up, dude. I was like, all right, I got to go home. Shane's transparency and humility when discussing his early life struggles is what makes him so relatable. I don't think I regret anything more than the way I handled myself in football. In high school football. 
As in general. Yeah, just, I mean, if I would have fucking yeah. buckled down and had any humility about it. Yeah. Shane openly talks about his regrets on podcasts, showing, despite his fame and success, he is still a normal guy who's made normal mistakes, allowing fans to feel connected with him and see the human behind his famous persona. Just as soon as I quit football, I just drank and stopped going to class. So I got, like, <laughs> kicked out of school. Fuck. I was back at my parents' house. Ah, gained, damn. Gained, like, 50 pounds. Uh. After Shane lost his identity of being a football player that he had maintained since childhood, he found himself in a downward spiral. That was like, my dad was like, you're a pussy. And that hurt. You know what I mean? And he was right at the time I was being a pussy. I was quitting everything. Shane then found himself at the lowest point in his life. So I left Elon, went to Harrisburg Area Community College. So this is all in the span of like a year and a half. My parents think I'm going to be like a senator at Westwood, like a general. Mm -hmm. A and general? Like a, year, <laughs> yeah, yeah. a year and a half later, I'm like <laughs> failing at community college, sleeping on their couch, washing dishes. <laughs> Even after escaping college football, Shane couldn't escape from the embarrassment that came from quitting. One year, I went with my sister on a snuggy bar crawl in Philadelphia. Okay. Okay. And it just happened to be the same night as Army Navy. So all of my... <laughs> All of my fucking, <laughs> I know where this is going. Dude, all of my teammates were out, and I ran into them at a bar. And you're in a snuggie. And I was in a fucking Ninja Turtle snuggie. Uh. After quitting two football colleges, Shane was already at rock bottom. But this put him at an even lower low. The guys that were my classmates, they were like, "Holy fuck, it's Gillis! Gillis, come over here!" And I was like. You guys seem good. I was I was like a fat, depressed fucking retard in a oh, snuggie. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever had a more humiliating experience. Now at a very low point with not much hope, Shane started washing dishes at his friend's restaurant to earn some money. But eventually, he rediscovered his confidence and decided to try something new with his life. Yeah, I ended up getting into Westchester University, just studied history. That was it. This is where Shane first discovered comedy. But see, so when I when I started comedy it was only in the summer because i would do it at home not really at school mm -hmm. and then uh i would take like six months off a year off like shit like that this was the beginning of the shane gillis we all know and love today but before we dive into shane's extensive comedy career let's first appreciate today's video sponsor raycon do you hate it when the noise around you blocks out your favorite song or your headphones die in the middle of that podcast you love? Then Raycon's everyday earbuds with active noise cancellation and a 32-hour battery life can fix that for you. These state-of-the-art earbuds have been designed to withstand all weathers and are resistant to sweat. They also come with a charging case and cord that gives your earbuds 90 minutes of battery life in only 10 minutes. So if you want to secure a pair for yourself, Click the link in the description box below or go to buyraycon.com forward slash the internet hard drive for 20 to 40% off your Raycon purchase that will be shipped to you for free. Personally, I find Raycon Everyday Earbuds amazing when it comes to going for long walks out in nature. And over 20,000 people have given five star reviews on Amazon alone. So this back to school sale isn't one you want to miss out on. So be sure to click the link in the description box below or go to buyraycon.com forward slash the internet hard drive for 20 to 40% off your Raycon purchase. But let's get back into it. After graduating Westchester with a bachelor's degree in history, Shane decided to move to Spain, where he became an English teacher in hope of better days. Spain, I, I lived in Spain <laughs> and I went out, I was teaching English and I went out with all these teachers. What city were you in? I was in Madrid. Oh, oh yeah. And I was with all these teachers and we went to like a concert and I was like, oh, we're gonna get fucked up, right? <laughs> and in Spain, they don't drink like that. They're drinking like very slow. Yeah. And I was like, hey everyone, watch this. And I bit the top off a beer and chugged it. And they were all like, no, 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 like they grabbed my arm while I was doing it, and a couple left, two of them left, they were like, <laughs> we don't want to be with this guy. Yeah. Shane's time in Madrid allowed him to rethink life. I'd be in Madrid, like, looking at Facebook, seeing all these guys from the Harrisburg Comedy Zone, which is where I was from, uh -huh. like, these guys that sucked, like, yeah. getting the host, I'd be like, these motherfuckers, I should be in there. Once returning to Mechanicsburg, fortune struck Shane. So then one day I was in the depressed phase, I was back home washing dishes at my friend's restaurant and oh, then wow. they were like hey one of the guys one of the chefs is doing a fucking open mic tonight and mm. i was like i Moment didn't know you destiny. could do that yeah. so in I, mechanicsburg like, yeah, PA? The Harrisburg comedy zone Shit. okay so i went and i watched there's like you know there's like nine people there in a bar 
Yeah. And I was watching it and I was like, oh, these guys suck. I could do yeah. this. However, Shane wasn't an instant success. So then I watched that for like two months and then I finally went on and just fucking bombed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, really? I was going to ask if you were oh. one of those comics that were good right away. Oh, like no, Hannibal was... Burris was like good right away. I got good quick, yeah. but the first time I went, I was like, I don't have to write anything. I'm uh, just right. funny. I'll just go up and tell a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Disaster. <laughs> I held the mic down at like my stomach. No one could hear no you. No one could hear me. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> but unlike football, Shane didn't quit. He persisted. And after two years of grinding, he found his stride and began making a name for himself. I, I did Magoobies, you know, Magoobies yeah. Joke House. Yeah. I won their new comedian of the year in 2014. Oh. Oh. And then I was like, all right, I can do this. And then I moved to Philly. Shane was displaying the traits of a successful comedian, but he still doubted himself, and he never believed he could be great. Like, got into stand-up, I was like, I'll never get SNL. Like, that's not... I knew who I was. I was, and I knew what they were. So I was like, that'll never... I'll never get that. Over time, Shane's confidence began to grow, and he began to take stand-up much more seriously. I, I moved to Philly with the only... the sole intent of doing stand-up. You know, I didn't move there. I moved there with no job, none of that. Shane then went on to win Philly's Funniest Comic Contest at the Helium Comedy Club and followed this up by starting the Matt and Shane's secret podcast. This is the very first episode. This is, this is big time, dude. History. This is history. I Shane's popularity was steadily increasing and he was making a name for himself in the comedic world. In Philly, he began to build up a following by performing at open mics and comedy shows where he showcased his unique self-deprecating style. I've never lost a fight, but I've also never not cried in a fight. <laughs> That's every fight. Every fight is just me getting punched in the face first, and then I cry, and I have one move. I just cry and walk straight at the person. <laughs> Why would you hit me? And then I squeeze him as hard as I can. <laughs> That's the only move I have. Shane got better and better over time and began doing comedy skits, displaying his great acting ability. All right, I'm here with Wade McKinney, the current urinal game champ here at Coca-Cola Park. Wade, thanks for being here. Pleasure to be here. So how did you get your start in this urinal game world? Well, uh, sort of a while back, I was at my son's t-ball game and uh, a couple of the dads from the other team were mouthing off and uh, I just, said right there, I said, let's see. Let's see who's got the stronger stream. And I took him right into the nearest John, the Porter John, and uh, had at it. I was hitting the back of that wall so loud. Dogs were barking. <laughs> After four years of working on his craft in the Philly comedy scene, Shane felt he was ready for the next step in his career. So he decided to pack up his bags and to make a bold move to the Big Apple, where he really began to blossom. Once he made an appearance on Comedy Central's Clusterfest Up Next, his popularity reached new heights. It was funny because all my friends went from like white trash to like I said woke and they were all like, they're all like, did you guys all vote Democrat? Did anybody here vote? Do you guys, do you guys remember how like confident you guys were? <laughs> going into that last one? Oh, you remember that? Like a little borderline arrogant going into that. All right, don't let it cost you again. No, I relax, relax. I did not vote for him. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> this newfound stardom for Shane caught the attention of SNL. I got to New York and my agents were like, hey, SNL wants to give you a packet, a writer's packet. I was like, I'm not gonna be a writer, I didn't do it. They were like, SNL wants you to audition. I was like, eh. Now they what were, like, were they seeing that caught their eye? Oh, uh, JFL. Okay. I did I did pretty well at JFL and at And you did stand up there or yeah, did yeah, you do just stand, -up. Just stand up? Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, they were like, we want you to audition straight to the main stage. So I was like, yeah, definitely. This was the beginning of many auditions and long, grueling waits. So you got cast on SNL. Yes. And then what happened? Um, so I found out I was getting on SNL the day before they announced it. So I got a call. They're like, hey, we want to put you on the cast. The whole time I was, we'll start from the top. <laughs> my, my agents and all those people, they were like, You're, do, you want to or do you want to write? Do you want to send a packet in for SNL? And I was like, no. I'm not going to be a writer. I'm never going to... I won't work on that show. And then I guess they saw me at JFL and Comedy Central thing. Shane quickly progressed through the green rooms without caving to the pressure that got to most. 
And once he went on the stage, his excellence began to show. I could see they were laughing, and you, I was told the whole time, no one's going to laugh. They were laughing, and I was like, oh, fuck. I did pretty good. Ran into Che that night. I was like, ah, I sucked. I was nervous. He was like, no, you were... That was good. Then a couple days later, you get a call back, and you go into the office, and you meet everybody, and you walk around and talk to everybody. And the people I was with that were also doing that, then you go into Lorne Michaels' office to meet him. Shane made it through the audition that most couldn't bear, and he was about to get that SNL signing. So they call the first person in, they meet with Lauren, they leave after like a minute. The next person gets called in, they leave. The third guy, they're like, you don't even have to meet him, you can leave. Which, that was pretty brutal. Oh, really? They yeah, they, 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 they were him. like, you can leave. Damn. He didn't even get to go in to meet Lauren. And then I sat another like hour and a half by myself in this room, and I was like, oh, I definitely got it. Like, at that point, I knew I got it. Uh, Why? What are you thinking? Because the three people, there are rapid already. succession, in and out, see ya. And then it was just me waiting. Shane knew what he deserved after all the years of grinding back in Mechanicsburg in Philly. Shane's time was coming, and he knew it. Like, I'm going to be on it. Like, this is, I can't believe I got this. I wasn't even excited. I was just like, this is wild. <laughs> this is fucking nuts. <laughs> and then I go in and meet with Lauren, and he's, he's the man. He's a nice guy. And he was like, I'm going to use you, but I don't know how. Shane made it. He overcame all his limiting beliefs and actually landed a deal with the biggest comedy show in the world, all within one year of making the move of his life. The first year I moved to New York, that's when I got SNL. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. first year in. Yeah, there. like right away. Yeah, it was cool. The stage was set for Shane to debut on SNL and establish his name in comedic history forever. Okay. And then on 9-11... I got the phone call that says that was Lauren, and it was like, we're going to put you on the cast. And I was like, nice. oh, shit. On and then, the cast. And then September 12th, they released the information that I was going to be on the cast. Shane just had to pass the vetting process to ensure he was eligible to perform. Like, they have people that vet you. Right. But they, they're not used to people having podcasts. Right. So they'd have to go through hundreds they would, of They go hours through your shit. Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter. <laughs> I, I was just like, I'll just delete all that shit. I don't care. Delete it all. Right. But I was like, I also have a podcast. And they're like, yeah, what's that? And I was like, I don't know. I say like gay and retard a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, they were like, oh, that's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so I was like, all right. Then came September 12th, 2019, and a roller coaster of emotions for Shane Gillis. He was at the center of the spotlight, and the focus was all on him. So the day they announced it, it's a, it, was, it was cool. It was very cool. You hear from everybody you've ever grown up with. They're all like, holy shit. What just like I can't believe you're on this, and then so that lasted for about like three hours before an article came out that was like here's what this guy says. There's a clip of me saying some, you know, unsavory stuff. Shane got fired from SNL the same day it got announced that he was going to be on the show. All his hard work from the bottom to the top didn't seem to matter when old podcast clips of him using racial and homophobic slurs were dug up. So like I was getting like texts that were like. Did you say this? And then like 20 minutes later, be like, you need to call me. <laughs> like, And then the whole way, and by the time I got to the stand, like TMZ. This caused an uprising, and news channels began to post articles, and comment section warriors got fired up. A Saturday Night Live shakeup, the show firing one of its new cast members before he even appeared on the broadcast. This comes after past racist remarks surfaced. I think I was number one on Twitter for like three straight days. Wow. Of just getting fucking eviscerated. Did you read it all? Yeah, oh, I read all of it. Oh no. Yeah, everybody was like, stop reading comments. I still read comments. I Do read you? every comment. Why? I don't know. Once it was clear Shane crossed the line, chaos erupted, and he started receiving advice on how to handle the situation. Lorne and all these people tell me what to do, like don't apologize, apologize, say all this shit. What's Lorne telling you? Lorne's so NBC is saying, here's the statement you need to say. And it's like a written out, like, what I said was inexcusable. I've learned from my mistakes. Like that, like, paragraph, you need to tweet this. And I was like, I'm not going to tweet that. Shane didn't cave under pressure, and he made sure he wasn't just going to post a standard apology. And instead, he chose to stay true to himself. But then Lauren was like, I just need you to give me something. So I was like, all right, that's fair. It's reasonable. And uh, so, yeah, I just had like five minutes. He was like, I need something in the next 10 minutes. So I just sat there and typed something out. And sent, tweeted it? Yeah. <laughs> that and, was it. And that didn't do anything for him? No, fuck no. 
I mean, I sent it to him first, and he was like, "All right, yeah, we'll we'll try. Post this, see how it goes." And there's no apologizing, you know. Nobody, if I, there's nothing I could have said in that moment where any, all these people that wanted my job would have been like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. When you tweet an apology, there's no, it's not going to do anything. No. They're, they're going to just rip it apart. Yeah, that was, that was a funny part was having to write like these like congressional apology, like all yeah. these like very like. Well, talking to Logan, I talked to him about Logan. it and he was like, yeah, he goes, you, you really can't let that shit get in your head because it is a big thing when people just come for you. Yeah, and... it's embarrassing afterwards. Yeah. Afterwards, when you realize how serious you took it. Right. Um, and I c- kept trying to remember that. I was like, just remember in like a month, you're going to be like, oh, I wish I didn't say all that. That's embarrassing. Yeah. But I think I did. I'm, I'm proud of, not proud, but I'm okay with how I did it. Unlike most, Shane brushed this off and used it to his advantage. Shane grew in popularity thanks to how he handled the situation. Look, if people bring up cancel culture, I'm just like... Honestly, I really believe it's better for you in the long run. I really do. You're a brilliant comedian, and I think your sketches are incredible, and I think it's better that you not get attached to something yeah. that's ultimately corrupting. And I don't want to be on the other side of it where it's like... I'm a free speech guy, I'm a fucking... It's like, dude, I don't want to be involved in any of this. I just want to do comedy. Despite Shane's relaxed tone, did he just miss the potential peak of his career? When I would go on radio, they'd be like, oh, Shane, so tell us about SNL. What was getting fired like? I think it helped out. Don't you think it helped? (laughs) (laughs) Don't you think it helped you out? Wow. I'd be like, yeah, man, definitely. Eventually, once the noise settled down, Shane returned to making people laugh and appearing on podcasts. His own podcast also started to take off and reach new heights. I don't know. They should combine all women's sports into one event and have people like lapping them, soccer balls, shooting basketball. Yeah, just throw some balls out there. Let them run around. (laughs) Like a gym class. (laughs) Dog park, dude. (laughs) Just let them run around. They hope they're fighting. Let them fight. Shane was back on track to be a great comedian. He was named the 2019 Stand-Up Comic of the Year in the Interrobang's 6th Annual Comedy Awards. And he continued doing the Gillian Keeves comedy sketches. Bob Isis of Isis Toyota. And we have a great collection of pre-owned certified Toyotas. But there's one thing I want to make very clear, and it's that we have nothing to do with the terrorists over there in the Middle East right now. And that's why we are the good ISIS. He also used Gillian Keeves to showcase his great Trump impersonation skills. I don't even need a date, but I'll get a date if I want a date. You can go on Tinder. Have you heard of this? There's a Tinder. You go beep, boop, pop, and there's pussy. Then in 2021, Shane moved to Austin, Texas in an attempt to get closer to the comedy scene. And during one of his appearances on the Joe Rogan Experience, he showcased his great impersonating skills once again. You know how these guys go. He just shadow boxes the whole time. You're talking to him and he's like, yeah, fucking body shot, body shot, liver, liver, bang straight <laughs> to your fucking face. Look back out there. This guy sounds like a nightmare. He was Jesus Christ. hell. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't you can't move. You can't like, like flinch to the body because then you'll literally get punched in the fucking face. Yeah, yeah. The guy's a fan. He's like, ah, let's do a fucking Jaeger bomb. Let's have a fucking, <laughs> let's take it easy, man. I was like, all right, I'll do a Jaeger bomb. <laughs> in this time, Shane also launched his first special live in Austin, Texas, which has 29 million views to this day. If you do heroin long enough, you run out of money. You got to start doing quests. <laughs> you know, is it you know? It's like a fucked up game of Zelda. Every day, you just wake up to a new quest. It's like, you need to gather coppers. It's like a seven hour bus ride. It's nothing to them, dude. (laughs) Nothing. If you take heroin, every bus is a bullet train. (laughs) It's a five minute ride, tops. Appearances on Flagrant and Kill Tony also pushed Shane's popularity to new heights and grew his fan base larger than ever before. <laughs> uh, Shaq rules. Squid Game stinks. <laughs> That's all we need, I guess. Good. <laughs> Movies suck. Movies you guys like suck. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, what an unbelievable experience it is. What a great show this could be instead. We've got an absolute idiot here running the show. The next years were up only for Shane, as more and more people began to love his comedy because he is a straight up guy who is actually funny. You're not you gonna believe this cat's ass, dude. Let me see, let me see that cat's ass. bite me. Uh, it's worth it, dude. <laughs> Yo, ew, ew, dude. Shane grew his podcast to become the biggest on Patreon. You drink wine when you're out on dates sometimes? 
Yeah. What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> Throughout Shane's growth and popularity, he's remained open and completely transparent about his common struggle with what most men face today. Two nights ago, I, I, I masturbated. No doubt. It was pretty tight. Nothing wrong with that. It was sick. Yeah? I think it was a stepmom and son on a vacation. Turns out there's only one bed. And there's a box of tissues next to my bed. You know where this is going. Replenished. Plowed through the tissues again. Oh. This <laughs> is box number two oh. since I've been home. Shane then released his second special, this time on Netflix, and it caught the world's attention again. After earning the respect from the all-time great comedian Dave Chappelle, Shane's secret talent was revealed. Of all the presidents, I think it's fair to say Donald Trump would be the funniest one to see get shot. It's because he'd be in the middle of a speech talking shit. Just, You're gay. <laughs> The shooter would be coming at him and be like, sit down, get down. <laughs> what a loser, get down, sit down. <laughs> but just the noise he would make when he got hit. Even if you love Donald Trump, it would be funny. As soon as he got hit, he'd be like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> eh. <laughs> It's crazy to think that recently Trump did actually get shot, and it sounded exactly how Shane predicted. And this is not the first time Shane has done this. Back in 2019, he made a bold statement about a rapper that was timed to perfection. Gotta that wait. reminds me, I do want to say this. I want to be on the record. Drake, sure. Drake's going to be, he's on that R. Kelly tip. You think so? Drizzy Drake likes him young. What? He does. That's somewhat known already, but it... This is one of those things where I want to, you know, you got to say something. Like, remember Louie, that whole thing? Yeah. And, like, we knew about that. Yeah. And we were just like, I don't know. L Drake, Drizzy Drake's into the young ones. He's going to get got in the next five years. Oh. Like, I don't know. L Drake, Drizzy Drake's into the young ones. He's going to get got in the next five years. This has since come out in Drake's beef with Kendrick Lamar, where similar accusations were made. And Drake doesn't try to hide it. On August 10th, 2022, he wrote Predator weak as hell in this movie. LOL, put me in there and I'll show him a real Predator. <laughs> he deleted this tweet seconds later for obvious reasons. People are also using Drake's own song lyrics to incriminate him. And yeah, it's crazy, but with Shane's increasing popularity, he began doing tours across the United States and in Europe. Where do you sit the hot ladies? <laughs> There's no women. It's <laughs> just dudes. What is this? This is the concession stand. How many drinks does someone have to have to enjoy a Shane Gillis show? Uh, three. And how many drinks does a Shane Gillis have to have to perform a Shane Gillis show? It's usually five. <laughs> he also took the time to return to Philly, where he perfected his comedic craft for four years and made an appearance at the home of the Philadelphia Phillies. <laughs> Let's go! Shane pulled up to Barstool and made a mockery out of one of the backstage team members who tried to challenge him during a case race, revealing another side of his personality. Hold on, before you answer, this is either going to result in a fight between you and I, a wrestling match, or you're cool. Okay. Well, I knew I, I love that Think about it, think about it. Uh, yeah, think you know, about I'm it. I'm going to take this. my glasses off to wrestle you. Oh, you're okay, will you? <laughs> I'll, I'll be in there in five seconds. Yeah. He will, he you will. Fucking absolute nobody. Shane also made a total of 17 JRE appearances, making him the 16th highest appearing guest on Joe's podcast and won yet another drinking competition. All right, God damn. Some guys can't handle their Bud Lights. Ari, I would say that I'm disappointed <laughs> in you, but I'm not. This is exactly what I expected. That was an honorable fucking death. Right at the start of 2024, Shane landed a Bud Light sponsorship and single-handedly put the failing beer company on his back, which officially made him the Bud Light King. Bud Light, uh, the brand of Dylan Mulvaney, has gotten a new a celebrity endorsement, celebrity sponsor, the one, the only Shane Gillis, and we love Shane Gillis. But um, now he's got a tough task. He's got to save Bud Light and turn him from transgender back to a man. And... Uh, Shane has also become a cast member on Pete Davidson's Bupkiss show. I didn't do anything. Just tell me what you did. All right. There's a girl at the Daily Mail. We got a weird thing going. I want to fucking have sex with her, dude. So I told her where you were a bunch. That's what I'm worth. 
You sold me out for a blowjob? What's head? Do not let this ruin our fucking, our future together, dude. What? You know what I'm doing. We started from the bottom, dude, and now we're, we're here. here. No, we're we here. did it. I, I known you for like three months. I was pretty low, dude. That was my bottom. Dude, it's over. Dude, don't fucking tell anybody about this. Don't tell Chris Evans. Don't fucking touch your phone, dude. Do not tell Chris Evans about this. I just told him. Chris! Dude, it's over. Go home. We're friends, dude. We're like tight friends, dude. It's not about friends. It's about family. You're not family. Now get the fuck out of here. Shane then made another great Netflix show, making it his third special on there, which, yet again, did extremely well. You look good. Dude, you're like way older than us. You're like old enough to be our dad. It's pretty hot when you put it like that, isn't it? No. Oh! Shane now had millions of followers and hundreds of millions of views across all social platforms and fans all over the world. He officially made it as a world-class comedian, and to top it off, Shane Gillis finally had his full circle moment. Shane's appearance on SNL planted him at the top of comedy and has put him in the conversations about being the GOAT. He followed this up with appearances in SNL's comedy sketches. We want to hear about Jesus, Father Lawrence. <laughs> See? Church is church. Father is right. Jesus was upon the cross, died for our sins, and three days later, he going to raise up in the heaven. <laughs> I learned something important today. An office is a sacred place, and office relationships are tough. But you can only ask someone out once, and if they say no, that's it. Okay, that's literally the only thing we've covered today. But here's something you didn't cover. You can bank yeses, and they roll over every year. Hey. Boom, baby. <laughs> Let's be honest, I had this one in the bag. This is a hoot. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> All right, our next award is Most Successful. Uh-oh, and... looks like it might be a clean sweep tonight for me. <laughs> the winner, of course, is Forrest Gump. <laughs> After all the failures and comebacks, Shane finally did it. Now, despite Shane's story being second to none, some other comedians also have meteoric stories. Click here to watch. <laughs> 